Welcome back to a brand new video from Bird One. In today's video, we're gonna do something on the overclocking series once again because Bird One is crazy and I want it to be on the top 100 of the Hall of Fame of Firestrike, 3D Mark, or whatsoever. As JZ2 Sands, Linus Tech Tips, and Gamer Nexus are hanging out with the new RTX 2080 Ti, I could use my five year old CPU and I can be in the top 100 just by figuring out something that they probably don't even know about. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret here today. All the GPUs are manufactured differently. So even though if you're having a GTX 1060 with this minor little chip over here, this one is not gonna make it. Nvidia just cuts them off. So the best explanation you can have is you start with a V8 and you cut down the cylinders until you have a V1. So even though this one is still the V8 but only has one cylinder, this one has the biggest potential of all because this Titan V, for example, has the most potential because it has more CUDA cores on board than this little chip over here. But my point is, even this Titan V is actually, this one's the best one, but today's video is gonna show you how to figure out with which graphics card is actually the best to use for overclocking or reaching the highest world records. This is actually what they did wrong in the video. They didn't actually try out and see how far every single graphics card was able to go. So the thing is, I'm going to show you that in today's video as we have three Titan Vs. Uh, this one is taken apart for liquid meddling and whatsoever. It's crazy stuff coming soon. We're going to push these three Titan Vs to their limit on the core and the memory. And then you can decide which graphics card is actually the best because they won't all reach the same core and memory speeds. It has to do with the production process on these Titan V's chips or GTX 1080 Ti chips. It's all the same, but the production process, the one that is made the most perfect, that has all the transistors that are working, um, they are going to be the ones that are reaching higher clock speeds. Actually, this was called the ASIC rating of your graphics card before the GTX 10 series, but Nvidia decided to take this out of the card, so nobody knew this. But actually, this is pretty necessary if you want to go really crazy on benchmarking. So let's get into the video and let's benchmark some Titan Vs. Okay, so it's pretty simple to set up as the same as I did behind me. I'm gonna test the Titan Vs individually from each other. So every single time I'm going to benchmark them and what I'm gonna do here is just test out how far the core can go before it crashes and how far the memory will go before it crashes. But there's only one way to test this and that is to run the benchmark over and over and over again until it actually crashes out. So what we are accomplishing here is founding the boundaries of the crashing of the Titan Vs and by then we actually know which one is the best because at the event, very end of the benchmark you get your score and you actually can see which one is the best. But I didn't go for a Fire Strike Ultra immediately because actually those, the benchmark superposition is a little bit more accurate because it doesn't use too much CPU. So CPU is not bottlenecking, you don't have to overclock the CPU to increase your score. So this is actually a better benchmark to figure out your best GPU. And after you have your values and you know which graphics card is the best out of the three or four or whatever you have uh, going to be tested or your entire mining farm, I don't mind. But at the very end, you know which graphics card is the best and this one is the one you're gonna run the Fire Strike benchmark with.
Okay, so let's run into the numbers of all this long benchmarking of Superposition 4K because 4K was actually the one that I liked the most. But the thing is, first of all, we ran all three Titan Vs on stock and 120% TDP because I'm gonna run all these cards 120 TDP all along the benchmark because if you want to do some benchmarking and get some world records you need to heat up this cards like there's lava underneath their butts okay so first of all the titan v number one scored exactly the same as titan v2 at the stock settings the titan v3 was shining over here it was slightly better than the other two Titan V1 started getting in trouble at about 170 plus on the core and 220 on the memory. If I increase the core to 175, it crashed. If I increase the memory to 225, it crashed. So this was the most stable one Titan V1 was able to run. And eventually it scored 13,454. So this was actually a really good score. We did exactly the same for Titan V2. But it's way too much information to put on this graph as well, so I made it pretty slim. This one was actually reaching exactly the same as Titan V1, but Titan V2 was just a little bit more stable on the memory and the core for some reason. I don't know, it didn't have artifacts, it didn't have anything like it, and it scored at 13,480, so this was slightly better. Uh, this was actually the winner of today, but Titan V3 as the winner before was actually the one that was scoring the highest on the core. This one was reaching 190 on the core easily compared to the other two that were almost crashing out at 170 or 175. This one just kept on going. But here comes the catch. This one wasn't able to run 220 on the memory at all and actually increasing the memory core speed is very important for these benchmarks as the textures need to be loaded in and we ended up with only 13,396 at the highest score for this card even though the core was blowing them all away this one was not doing the same as the other two okay so first of all we continued on with titan v2 titan v1 seemed not to run fire strike ultra so easy as titan v2 so we continued with titan v2 and we ran the fire strike ultra times one so first of all we started off with our cpu being stuck every optimization was stuck uh, we came with a 150 150 to start off with to see if actually everything was the same as superposition and we scored about 8560 but in order to get on to the top 100 we needed to score about 8700 uh, right now it's even more it's like 9200 or so so we got out of the benchmarks straight away with our titan v but the point is today i want to prove you guys how far we push this graphics card. So let's continue on. We raised the core, we raised the memory, and at a certain point, we were again at 170 and 200, and we scored a very nice 8,634. But this was the point when Kingpin once told me, you need to activate something in the NVIDIA control panel to increase your benchmark scores by just a little bit. And I was like, okay, let's do that. So we, we set those settings in our NVIDIA control panel to put our texture to higher performance and whatsoever. And we scored with the same core and clock settings, 8,672. So we had about 40 increase in benchmarking score. That was pretty interesting. But then we did something completely different. We started increasing the core, the memory, and we started overclocking our CPU. As I said before, the superposition benchmark is not really a CPU benchmark limiting thing, but Firestrike is, and we had to overclock our CPU. So we increased the block to 105. We're using a Xeon and this is pretty hard to overclock. So we came to 8770 for a 105 block. We also increased the memory a little bit because this time it was running stable at 175. So I was really thinking that my, my, my CPU was a bottleneck on the Titan V here. Uh, it wasn't able to go above 175 before crashing out. So I thought like, let's go nuts, let's increase the block speed to 108. I know this is very, very unstable for my Intel Xeon. And we finally got above 8806 
And then at the very end, I was trying to go absolutely nuts. I thought like, okay, we're running at 108 on the block on the CPU. We have to try the memory increase as well. So I tried 180 on the core as well, but it crashed out. So 175 was really the max we could push it. But eventually we had the benchmark. We had 8,842 and we came on the top 100 with a five-year-old CPU. <laughs> and one of the highest end GPUs because we're even using DDR3 memory instead of DDR4 that most of these systems have across my system. This is just absolutely crazy. Finally, we had one top 100 spot for just a couple of days because that's when the RTX 2080 Ti's came out. People with high end GPUs and CPUs also have an advantage on here with a new graphics card and they pushed me out of this top 100 pretty fast but it was just something to prove here today and hopefully you all enjoyed this video today and see you guys in the next one.